I welcome you all in this webinar on harvesting of wheat seeds, a novel preventive way of wheat management. I will uh, request uh, Mr. Gyanendra for lighting of the lamp. Chairperson Dr. B. Sridhar, who is the Dean of Agriculture Engineering, Umbetur, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University. Welcome, Dr. Sridhar Sahab. Now, I welcome Dr. Michael Walls, who is the Director of Weed Research from University of Sydney, Australia, and who is also the lead speaker of today's talk. Welcome, Dr. Michael Walls. Thank you. Now I welcome my director, Dr. J.S. Misra, who is also the organizing secretary and director of the Directorate of Weed Research. I welcome you, Dr. Misra Sahab. Thank you. Thank you very much. So before we start, friends, uh, uh, it, it is my privilege to uh, introduce uh, uh, with you uh, uh, the, our uh, Chair, uh, our chairperson, Dr. Sridhar. Dr. Sridhar is a, a professor and dean in Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, Bombay Tour. Uh, he is having uh, about 33 years of vast experience in teaching, research, and extension at Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, Bombay Tour. He has served as professor and head agriculture machinery research center. He has developed and released many implements that have been popularized among the farmers. He had guided undergraduate students, postgraduate students, and PhD students in the field of farm power and machinery. He had published research publication in Journal of International and National Reputes, besides serving as associate editor in Madras Agriculture Journal. He has received many awards also. Now. Uh, it is my privilege to introduce our lead speaker, Dr. Michael Walls. In fact, Dr. Michael Walls at present is director of wheat research with the University of Sydney. He grew up on a farm in Victoria. He did his PhD from University of Wyoming in 1998. Dr. Michael then worked with the Australian Herbicide Resistance Initiative from 1999 to 1993, he has worked with the Australian herbicide resistance, where he focused on the research and development of harvest wheat seed control system. His efforts in the area of harvest wheat seed control have led to the introduction and the Australia-wide adoption of system that target wheat seed during crop harvest. Dr. Michael joined the University of Sydney in 2016, where he is responsible for leading research on the development of alternate wheat control technologies for the northern grain cropping region of the New South Wales and New Zealand. In fact, Dr. Michael has also published a lot of uh, research papers in uh, international and national reputes of the journal. So uh, this, uh, with this uh, small introduction of the lead speaker and about the chairman now I invite uh, Director DWR, Dr. J.S. Misra, and Secretary Indian Society of Wheat Science uh, for his address. Dr. Misra Saab. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Susil Kumar. And uh, uh, I also welcome all the dignitaries, uh, especially Dr. Sridhar, Dean, College of Agriculture, TNAU Coimbatore, and uh, the chairman of the session and the speaker of the day, Dr. Michael Walls, a renowned uh, weed scientist, especially for the 
uh, preventive weed management methods like weed seed harvest. Uh, my senior colleagues from the Directorate of Weed Research and the uh, my senior weed scientists like uh, uh, Dr. Enturadhanti Adiraju Saab is there, Dr. Chinnamuthu is there, and many more uh, colleagues are there. So I welcome you all in this uh, webinar. As we all know that uh, weeds, the weed seeds are the actual culprits for the uh, weed management. So if we prevent the entry of weed seeds in the soil, uh, certainly the maximum part of weed management is over. So most of the weed seeds in the soil they are going, they are from the previous season. And even in spite of so much efforts and uh, herbicide use, even herbicides, they are very effective in controlling weeds. But as we know that weeds are coming in several places. So the weeds coming in later plus, they are there in the field and they produce large number of seeds. So that seeds goes to the soil for the next season weed infestation in the soil. Secondly, when we use the machinery for harvesting of the crop, along with the machinery, most of the weeds and weed seeds, they enter in the uh, different fields as the machinery moves on. You see in the India, when we talk about the Phaleris minor, earlier its infestation was in the northern states, especially in Punjab and Haryana. And where the combined machine was used to a large extent, and later on, when this combined machine moves to the downwards to the UP, to the Madhya Pradesh and other parts, so along with that combined machinery, the Phaleris minor seeds is spread in the other parts of the region also. So that is one way how these machineries are involved in the spread of the uh, beet seeds. Secondly, when we are talking about the organic agriculture, and we all know that organic agriculture is gaining importance, uh, in India also. But unlike the other organic insecticides, organic herbicides are not available. So ultimately we have to rely on the mechanical methods and non-chemical methods. So and that perspective also, the prevention of weed seeds to enter in the field, that is most important. And moreover, we have seen in our Indian conditions also, even after harvesting of the crop, say, like wheat, like pulses, winter pulses, like chickpea, field pea, or oil seeds, many of the winter season beads, when we talk about like uh, avena, like chenopodium album, and many more beads. These beads plant remain in the uh, field and they propose large amount of seeds and they ultimately set and go into the soil. So the topic of the day, which Dr. Ma Michael Walsh is going to deal is a paramount importance in the project context of the weed management. We cannot rely for a longer time on the herbicidal weed management because of the so many problems of uh, herbicide resistant weeds are coming. No new molecules of different chemistry are there. So ultimately, the most important way is how to prevent the entry of weed seed in the future uh, crops. So with this brief remark, I think the, the, the topic of the day is very important and it is going to give a give a very good message, especially for the young generation, for the student, for the researcher, that how we can deal with the prevention of the beet seed in the future soil seed bank. So with this, this brief remark, I once again uh, welcome Dr. Dr. Walsh for his remarks and his valuable lecture. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Mishra, uh, for your kind address. Uh, now I invite uh, Dr. B. Sridhar, chairperson of this uh, webinar and dean of agriculture and engineering, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, Bombay Tour. Dr. Sridhar is also an engineer and uh, he has developed uh, many machinery. So, sir, I invite you for uh, your kind address. Dr. Siddhar, sir. Good morning to all of you. Am I audible, sir? 
most respected convener and president of indian society of beat science and respected secretary indian society of beat science and director indian council of agricultural research director of weed research jabalpur and today's guest speaker dr michael walls director of weed research plant breeding institute university of chitney australia participants of this uh, this webinar in, in fact uh, i feel happy in chairing this uh, session i came to understand that uh, in this year indian society of weed science had organized uh, eight webinars the ninth webinar is by our uh, dr michael walls from australia on the topic very interesting topic that is a harvesting of weed seeds a novel preventive way of weed management in this auspicious day we are going to benefited by his talk in this context let me have a few added attributes first thing is i have to congratulate indian society of weed science who is taking much effort in in disseminating the knowledge of weed management in its widest perspective at the same time this indian society of weed science encourages research education and extension in the scientific and practical aspects of weed management as well as it also helps in designing and developing weed control tools and implements in fact i am happy to say throughout in throughout the world everybody is focusing how to control weed so there are different methods of controlling cultural methods are there mechanical methods are there biological methods are there and chemical uh, methods are there. all these methods are having its own merits and demerits but today's context today's context of peace uh, uh, speak is how to make harvesting of weed seeds really it is a, a very good wonderful way to manage the weeds but one thing i again i want to share in this august forum today throughout india this major crops like paddy wheat sugarcane are being harvested by engaging combines combines of different types almost all the harvesting throughout india we can say this harvesting operation is done by combines only so and another aspect is the baler the baler is also getting popular among the farming community especially after harvesting the paddy crop or whatever the crop this baler is also getting popular so balers of uh, this uh, round baler and square, square balers are getting popular and each state department of agricultural engineering they are taking keen in introducing this machine in almost all the major areas where these crops like paddy wheat sugarcane are cultivated so in this context i think today's speaker dr michael who had already developed a harrington seed destructor in 2012 and he put a lot way in commercializing that also his research always focuses on systems that target weed seed production during crop harvest and also he is having lot of exposure with wide adoption of different machines in targeting weed seed that to during crop harvest so i think today's talk definitely it will give a very good uh exposure on uh, harvesting of the weed seed control system i think a lot of things have been developed in this uh, area one thing is a uh, chaff cart system nero windrow bending system then uh, bale barrack system and integrated impact mills now uh, let me let us uh, invite uh, our dr michael walls so he is the director of weed research for his uh, fantastic talk on harvesting of weed seeds Uh, that to a yeah, novel preventive way of weed management thank you for opportunity given to me thank you one and all 
thank you dr sridhar for your nice uh, address and uh, now i invite uh, dr michael walls for his lead talk on harvesting of wheat seeds which is a novel preventive way of wheat management uh, dr walls uh, now you may share your screen please okay well thank you very much um, for your kind and encouraging words uh, thank you, Dr. Mishra. Thank you, Dr. Shrida. And thank you to, to Dr. Sushil Kumar. Um, it's really encouraging and really pleasing to see so many people joining us here today. It, um, yeah, it's, it's thrilling. I'm uh, quite impressed that uh, so many people are so interested in um, viewing this seminar. Um, now, I'll try and... Uh, can you see the... Um, Presentation okay? I've made a mistake and not, yeah, now I'm at the start. Okay. I'll try and speak slowly um, so that uh, you can handle my quite strong Australian accent. Um, but uh, yeah, please feel free to interrupt if there's anything that you need me to, to repeat or to say more clearly. Okay, um, so the story of harvest weed seed control goes back quite a long way. Um, the Australian uh, agricultural region as highlighted in green here on this map uh, was originally a sheep production area. And when it was first settled, most of that area was, didn't have suitable livestock feed. And so the original farmers planted annual ryegrass right throughout this region. And so from the 1850s through to the 1970s, uh, we established and nurtured and grew prolifically annual ryegrass pastures for primarily sheep production. Uh, subsequently from the 1970s onwards, there was a transition due to economical reasons away from sheep production through to crop production and primarily wheat. Um, and that was an imposed system that had already contained right through this region, well-established, well-adapted annual ryegrass populations that were there in high densities. So this genetically diverse species cross-pollinated uh, with a short seed bank life was there in huge populations having adapted for several decades into this, uh, into this cropping environment or now cropping environment. So in general terms, Australian cropping over this highlighted green area, annually we crop about 25 million hectares, 60% of which is in wheat production uh, now it's predominantly conservation cropping, so little or no tillage. Stubble retention is primary, and we have a herbicide reliance for weed control. Um, it's large scale crop production program. So on average, every farmer plants 3000 hectares of crop each year. Uh, and this production is practiced on naturally low fertility soils and we have a low and variable rainfall. And so what that means is that we have a low input, low output production system, uh, and therefore we tailor our inputs according to our yield potentials. And as an example, the average wheat yield in Australia is about two tonne per hectare. It does vary quite widely, but that is the average. And so the inevitable consequence of this production system with a strong herbicide reliance is high frequencies of herbicide resistance, particularly in annual ryegrass populations right throughout our production regions. So in the Eastern States, on average, 70% of randomly selected annual ryegrass populations are resistant to one or more herbicide modes of action. So that means that Whenever you go and find a annual ryegrass population, say in New South Wales or Victoria, in, or Victoria there's a 70% chance that that population will be herbicide resistant. 
in Western Australia, there's much higher frequencies of resistance. Um, there have been much more intensive cropping programs such that naturally occurring populations of annual ryegrass in that state are almost all herbicide resistant. So 97% of populations are herbicide resistant in Western Australia. And looking at those numbers a little bit more closely, so this is a map where every dot represents a randomly collected annual ryegrass population. Uh, this is from a resistance survey with the results published in 2014. 95% of the populations that were randomly collected were resistant to two or more herbicide modes of action. So very strongly resistant herbicide populations, uh, annual ryegrass populations. So with such large frequencies of herbicide resistance, the Australian growers decided that they really needed to do something uh, to try and manage these ryegrass populations where herbicides were failing um, and that they needed to prevent the ongoing interference with the production program. And this, this is a common occurrence in Australia is that the seed heads of annual ryegrass up above the crop at crop maturity. And growers realised that that was resulting in the spread of ryegrass through their fields. So we did actually look at the seed retention levels of a number of weed species commonly occurring in Australian wheat fields at harvest time. Uh, so these numbers here for wild oats, wild radish, annual ryegrass and brome grass represent the proportion of total seed production that is retained above a 15 centimetre harvest height at wheat crop maturity. So at the, at the first opportunity to harvest, this was the proportion of seed that we found that would be collected by the harvester during the harvest operation. So these results represent the maximum potential weed seed collection that you could target during the harvest operation. So looking at these numbers over time, so this is the percent seed retention. So right at wheat crop maturity, uh, these are the numbers that I was talking about. So 99% for wild radish, 88% for ryegrass, 85% for wild oats, and just under 80% for brome grass. Over time, these numbers decline. So as we move past the, the initiation of crop maturity, um, there is a loss of seed retention. So seeds start shedding from the seed heads, tillers start falling over below harvest height. So your opportunity to target weed seeds declines as the harvest period progresses. And that rate of decline is much more rapid for some species than others. For brome grass and for wild oats, there's a loss of seed retention of about 2% per day. For wild radish and for annual ryegrass, that loss in seed retention is about 1% per day. Okay, so in terms of what that means for the farmer, so during grain harvest, uh, using these combines, uh, not only are they collecting the crop material and the grain, but they are also collecting weed seeds. And at the rear of the harvester, there is a weed seeding operation occurring. So the weed seeds collected by the front of the harvester exit the harvester in the residues and they are spread across the field. So even though a weed might enter here on the left-hand side of the harvester, the weed seeds coming out the back of the harvester are spread laterally across the full width of that harvest swath. So it is a, an ideal scenario for establishing a weed seed bank. So getting back to the efforts of Australian growers. So they established or developed six harvest weed seed control systems. Uh, there are two different approaches. So there are 
are two systems that target the chaff and the straw fraction. So narrow windrow burning and bale direct are targeting the both types of residues, the straw and the chaff during harvest. Uh, then there are four systems that target the chaff only. So chaff lining, chaff carts, chaff tram lining and impact mills just focus on the, the chaff fraction. Okay, and the reasons why they focus on the chaff fraction is that most of the weed seeds exit in the chaff fraction. So cross-section of a harvester showing uh, where the inputs come from in terms of harvesting. So the grain and weeds material is collected in the front here. It's all processed in the rotor. The grain and the weed seeds and residues, fine residues come out of the rotor here and they go across the, the top sieve and exit out in the chaff stream here. The straw material and the large plant material come through the rotor and they exit out in the straw fraction. And then the grain comes through the, the sieves and is taken by this auger system up into the, the grain tank. And so the reason for showing this diagram is to, to point out that if you're going to target the chaff fraction, then you also have to make sure that the weed seeds are in that chaff fraction. So there's attention needed to the way the harvester is set up to make sure the weed seeds are coming out in the chaff fraction. Uh, and I also wanted to point out that um, there is an inclusion of a baffle system um, in harvest weed seed setups that target the chaff fraction. So this is a sheet of curved metal that's included in the rear of the harvester with the aim of separating the straw and the chaff streams. So if you're targeting the chaff fraction with a, an impact mill, for example, then you don't want any straw contamination of that chaff fraction as it will block up the, the mill. Okay. Um, so getting back to talking generally about the, the harvest weed seed control systems, uh, we've conducted some fairly extensive uh, testing of the systems, of the various systems across different production regions. And the end result was that we found that they're all similarly effective, um, particularly when we tested them on annual ryegrass. Um, and what that means is that uh, when the harvester is set up properly, and the harvest weed seed control systems are operating properly, they will all have a similar impact at harvest on the weed seeds that they target. And that subsequently leads to a similar result the following year in terms of annual ryegrass emergence. So in the testing, we imposed treatments during the harvest operation. And then the following year, we came back in autumn and we measured the impact of those treatments by counting the ryegrass emergence in those test sites. And on average across those 20 odd sites, we found that uh, there was a similar reduction for all the systems and that reduction on average was around about 60%. Now, even though we might be um, causing a almost 100% reduction in weed seeds or 100% control of the weed seeds that we collect, because annual ryegrass has a seed bank, there is always some seed carryover from previous years that dilutes the effect of weed seed targeting during harvest. So that means that we don't get 100% reduction typically. Um, and it does depend on how large that seed bank is, just what we see in emergence the following year. So for example, if we've got a very large annual ryegrass seed bank, we impose our treatments at harvest in the following year, we can expect probably a 30% a reduction in annual ryegrass emergence. However, if we have a low seed bank level, we impose our harvest weed seed control treatments, then in the following year, we can expect to see a 90% reduction in annual ryegrass emergence. So the, the impact of what you do at harvest is diluted by how large the residual seed bank is. Now, now I'm just going to talk uh, about the specific harvest weed seed control systems. 
Uh, so chaff carts were the initial system used in Australia. Um, as the name indicates, they are a calf, uh, sorry, a, a cart for collecting the chaff during harvest. Once collected, um, those, that chaff is then piled in heaps across the field. Um, subsequently, those heaps or piles need to be managed to remove the weed seeds or to destroy the weed seeds. Uh, and there are a number of options. Uh, more commonly now, the, uh, they are used for grazing by livestock, typically sheep. Um, they can also be baled and removed from the paddock. Um, previously, there was a lot of burning to destroy those uh, chaff piles and therefore to kill the weed seeds. But uh, this is a not so frequent practice anymore due to conservation cropping programs. The next system that was developed was the Glenvar Bale Direct System. So this involves the attachment of a large square baler to the, to the combine. It is powered by the combine. During the harvest operation, all the chaff and straw material is collected and baled. And then we have these large square bales that are produced. So this is an ideal system for collection of livestock feed source. So after harvest, you can take those bales away from the paddock and in the process, you remove the, the weed seeds that are collected in those bales. Uh, narrow windrow burning uh, is a, a low cost, simple option where a farmer will attach a chute to the rear of the harvester. During the harvest operation, all the chaff and straw material is uh, concentrated into a narrow windrow that's about 50 to 60 centimetres wide. Then in the following autumn, when the conditions are right and there's a lower risk of fire escapes, those windrows are burnt to destroy the weed seeds. And they're burnt in such a way that the rest of the paddock, the rest of the field is not burnt. So we have these burnt strips across the, the field. Uh, the chaff tram lining and chaff lining systems are, are quite similar. So they involve the concentration of narrow strips of chaff material. So the weed seed bearing chaff material is concentrated into narrow rows uh, that are about 20 to 30 centimetres wide. In the chaff lining system, these rows are placed on the wheel tracks uh, and that's highly suited for a controlled traffic system where machinery is traveling over these wheel tracks. Uh, in the chaff lining system, the chaff line is placed between the wheels during the harvest operation. And so that chaff material is, is placed there and then it is allowed to uh, simply decay to uh, destroy the weed seeds. Um, there are a few options for these types of systems. Um, there is something called the chaff deck, which is a powered system that delivers the chaff material onto the, the chaff tram lines or a chute system that does the same operation. Chaff lining, um, different types of, of chutes that are either commercially available or they're homemade by the, the farmer. Uh, they do the same job, concentrating that material into a narrow row. Uh, what we have learnt from assessing the efficacy of these systems is that quite often the, uh, the chaff material can increase the survival of weed seeds in these rows. Um, but we, if we have sufficient levels of chaff material, we do get less weed seedling emergence. So even though there's some seed survival, the, uh, the layer of chaff is sufficient to prevent the weed seedlings from emerging, sometimes if there's enough there. But quite often we see these green strips of, of weed seedlings uh, coming from the, the chaff lines. So the, the results from the, the studies where we looked at the influence of wheat, barley, chaff on different weed species. Uh, and we found that, um, uh, so these are the percent survival of those weed species uh, beneath the chaff or beside the chaff. So in this instance here, 
there's been increased survival over summer from after harvest through to the start of the next growing season for annual ryegrass underneath wheat chaff. Uh, similarly, there was increased survival for wild oats. Uh, for brome grass, there wasn't much, there was no difference uh, in wheat chaff, but there was a difference in barley chaff, there was increased survival. Uh, sometimes we, can have, we found the opposite effect where there was decreased survival under the chaff compared to beside the, the chaff out exposed on the soil surface. Now in terms of the effect of increasing amounts of chaff on weed seedling emergence, so this is looking at the percent annual ryegrass emergence through increasing levels or increasing coverage of chaff. So in this, so we've got four different types of chaff, so wheat, barley, lupin and canola chaff. In each case, we're looking at annual ryegrass emergence. So starting off where there's no chaff, we've got near 100% emergence. Then as we have increasing coverage of chaff material, we get decreasing amounts of weed seedling or annual ryegrass seedling emergence through that chaff coverage. Uh, so that by the time we get to around 42 tonnes per hectare equivalent of chaff material concentrated on top of those annual ryegrass seedlings that, are, that have germinated and trying to emerge, we're getting uh, less than 90% emergence. Now, 42 tonnes per hectare of wheat chaff, for example, is equivalent to about a five tonne per hectare yielding grain crop. So if you're harvesting a, a wheat crop that's yielding five tonnes per hectare of grain and you're using about a 12 metre front on that harvester, then you're going to be concentrating the equivalent of 40 tonnes or 42 tonnes per hectare of chaff material into a narrow chaff line. Uh, so just finally about the, the chaff lines, um, there's a, a number of different options. So some growers, um, when they're preparing for planting, they have dedicated spray lines over these chaff lines that they apply a specific herbicide treatment to those lines to control the weeds. Some growers just leave them uh, intact and don't worry about them um, because they uh, uh, quite rightly state that way they've relocated all the weed seeds from across the, the paddock or across the field into narrow strips within the field. So they've taken weed seeds from 100% of the, the field and concentrated them into less than 5% of the field area. So they're not too worried and they believe that any weeds, seeds that are produced from these surviving plants will then be collected next harvest and drop back on those same wheel tracks or chaff lines. Um, also, if there's a sheep production system uh, on the farm, then the, uh, the sheep will graze those chaff lines to remove the chaff and the weed seeds. Okay, so impact mills. These are the, the most recent systems that have been developed and we now have a number of commercially available options. Um, so the, the attraction of these systems is that, is that they allow full residue retention in our conservation cropping systems. All the other harvest weed seed control systems involve the removal of residues either through the concentration in narrow areas or the burning destruction or baling removal of residues uh, and therefore nutrients as well. However, impact mills, they process the chaff material and then they return it to the paddock. They are all very effective, achieving up to 95% weed seed destruction of all sorts of weed species from wild oats, brown grass, even phalaris, um, canizer, uh, sunkosolaraceae, et cetera. From very small to very large weed species are all destroyed by these mill systems. Uh, just looking individually at what they look like, um, they all have a, 
a rotating base plate that has two rings of, of bars or, or metal area. And then they have a fixed top plate um, that the, the weed seeds enter into the center and through centrifugal forces have to make their, their way out through the bars. So that's the, sorry, the weed seeds and the chaff material. Um, and then they exit out these vents uh, and in the process, they're impacting backwards and forwards against the metal bars with those, sub those impacts subsequently resulting in high levels of, of seed destruction. Uh, this is another version. This is a seed terminator. The bars look a little bit different. They look like cages. Uh, but again, the, the chaff material containing the weed seeds enters into the center here and as it makes its way out at very high speeds, uh, impacting against the, the metal bars, metal cages. Uh, and this is the ready crop seed control unit, same system, enters in the centre here and then um, impacting by the bars as it exits. Uh, finally, we have the, the seed hog, which has these spinning blades, um, causing a different type of um, action, but a similar amount of impact on the chaff material and the contained weed seeds. So the number of options available indicates the increasing grower interest in these systems. Uh, so just looking at um, how harvest weed seed control can impact on your weed population over a long, term, long period of time. Uh, this is a study looking at uh, annual ryegrass population densities in a cropping rotation uh, that was run from 2001 through to 2016. So every year there was a, a crop in, the, in these paddocks, in these fields, sorry. There were 25 fields in total that were monitored over that period. They started off with very high annual ryegrass population densities uh, the populations were counted at crop anthesis. So they, they were populations that had set seed, uh, having survived all the weed control treatments. Uh, over time, the growers were able to get the populations under control uh, using a combination of herbicides um, as well as harvest weed seed control. So there were 13 fields where the growers used herbicides alone, um, even though they were resistant populations, there were still some residual herbicides that were available for the growers to use. They reduced the populations from over 50 plants per meter squared um, down to around about five to 10 plants per meter squared. So just zooming in a little bit closer um, to the period from about 2007 onwards, so we've reduced the populations down to between five and 10 plants per meter squared by using herbicides alone in 13 fields. In the other 12 fields, this is represented by the green line, they use the same herbicide regime. So the same herbicide treatments, but they added in an at harvest weed seed control treatment. And that brought the annual ryegrass densities down to less than one plant per meter squared. So consistently from 2008 onwards, there was less than one plant per meter squared setting seed in these fields. So importantly, what that means for seed production and seed inputs into the seed bank is that when we translate these population densities to seed produced or seed production um, after harvest, where there's no harvest weed seed control, every year there were between one and 2,000 seeds per metre squared going into the weed seed bank. So fresh seed bank inputs. Where harvest weed seed control was used, there's just one to 200 seed per metre squared going into the seed bank. So there's an order of magnitude lower seed bank inputs just through the use of an at-harvest weed seed control treatment that's targeting those weed seed productions. And that's the true benefit of harvest weed seed control is just in targeting that weed seed production to prevent seed bank inputs. 
So in terms of the use of harvest weed seed control by Australian growers, uh, now the majority of, of Australian farmers are using some form of harvest weed seed control. There's still quite a lot who are using narrow windrow burning, uh, but more and more we're seeing the increased adoption of chaff lining, tram lining treatments uh, and impact mill systems. Um, these are probably much more user-friendly systems for conservation cropping systems. So the, the result of the increased adoption and use of harvest weed seed control systems is that we're now starting to see reductions in annual ryegrass densities across the cropping regions. Um, so quite frequently, we're seeing a lot less than one plant per metre square occurring in our cropping systems. Uh, and that, which is great because as we know, the lower the plant densities, the lower the uh, evolution, lower the potential evolution for herbicide resistance. And the important point is that low weed densities are our best insurance against resistance evolution. We know after studying these resistance prone species, such as Phalaris and annual ryegrass, that they do have the potential to evolve resistance to every type of weed control treatment. They are genetically diverse, highly adaptable species. So if we try to target them consistently with cultivation, herbicides, harvest weed seed control, and even fire, we know that in time that they will potentially evolve resistance. But that potential for resistance evolution is dramatically decreased once we establish very low weed densities. So if we continue to drive our weed densities down in our cropping fields, then we continue to reduce the potential for resistance. Okay, and with that, well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Walls. Uh, it was really very interesting talk. And uh, in fact, uh, I could learn a lot uh, from this talk. And uh, uh, really, I wonder that how nicely these machines works uh, to extract the weed seeds. And now uh, uh, the, the talk is uh, open for discussion. Now I invite the participants uh, to interact with Dr. Michael Walls. Uh, and I, I will also request the participants uh, if uh, uh, they can also put their questions on the chat box. So here what I see that uh, renowned weed scientists from India like Dr. N.T. Yaduraju, Dr. A.N. Rao, Dr. A.S. Rao, Dr. Chinnamuttu and so many others uh, are, uh, are listening to this talk. So uh, may I invite uh, Dr. N.T. Yaduraju sir for, uh, uh, for his comments. Uh, Dr. N.T. Yaduraju sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sushil. Uh, I'm audible. Yeah, you are audible, sir. But uh, before you start, sir, for the uh, I want to introduce you uh, with uh, Dr. Michael Walls and other participants. Dr. Yaduraju uh, was uh, uh, the director of uh, directorate of weed research this uh, from India. So uh, uh, he is very knowledgeable person, and uh, I will request now Dr. Uh, uh, Yaduraju sir uh, to interact uh, with Michael Walls. Uh, uh, first of all, let me compliment Dr. Michael Walsh for the excellent presentation. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, um, Michael, for a nice presentation of a new idea, uh, which is very, very, you know, I think has a big impact. It's going to have a big impact. And of course, as rightly pointed out by Michael, that uh, herbicide resistant weeds are going are a big problem. It's a global problem. Many weeds are showing resistance to weeds. And then uh, uh, because of uh, uh, lack of herbicides, uh, people are trying to uh, fall back on the old methods of weed control, including uh, tillage. And uh, 
uh, and this one is a very new concept and uh, very happy to learn from you, Michael, that, uh, uh, you know, this uh, uh, harvest uh, uh, seed collector technology is working very well and uh, more than 80 to 90% of the weeds are uh, controlled and uh, a good collection of weed seeds are made. And uh, more than that, I think the whole idea is that uh, you are trying to uh, so bring down the seed rain and then so ultimately it's going to impact the soil seed bank. I think that is very important contribution because we all know that uh, the soil is a, a repository of uh, weed seeds and millions and billions of weed seeds are there which are going to be a problem in the you know, many years to come. Uh, I think uh, in that way, I think it is very, very important. Uh, I just wanted to know from you that, uh, you know, I think uh, you are harvesting the weed seeds and then, uh, you know, uh, I think it is too much to ask is that uh, whether the seeds can be recovered. Uh, I think the seeds are so small, I don't think uh, uh, is the, I think uh, it's maybe very difficult to do that, but if it can be done, then I think uh, the, the weed seeds will not be left in the field. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think, uh, of course, uh, farmers are, uh, uh, you know, trying to control them uh, in a smaller area. And uh, some people, I think uh, we can also afford to leave uncontrolled also for some time. But uh, is there any attempt that, uh, you know, uh, to, to collect, the seeds and then incinerate them at a different place so that uh, the weed seed uh, return is almost 100% avoided. I, thought, I don't know. I, maybe it is uh, too much to ask from the technology. Uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Yadu Raju. Um, it's an interesting idea to collect the weed seeds during harvest uh, and remove them. Um, uh, look, it's definitely possible. Any uh, engineer will tell you that it's, it is possible. Uh, it's a matter of whether it's practically um, available or practically possible, I suppose, in, within the busy harvest operation. I think the thing to keep in mind is that um, not all the weed seeds are collected during harvest. So there, there are always some weed seeds that escape collection, either due to pre-harvest shedding or um, there's some losses, small losses during the harvest operation. So you're never going to be able to collect 100% for most weed species. Um, uh, so the, yeah, so that's, I guess, one aspect of it. Um, but I think that, yes, it's definitely possible to collect specifically the weed seeds, but whether there's a, an appetite from growers to do that might be another matter because it would probably slow down their harvest operation significantly. Thank you. Thank you. So may I now invite Dr. Ian Rao, sir? Dr. Rao, sir, you uh, had put some questions uh, on the chat. Yeah. So please interact with uh, Dr. Walsh. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Walsh. Uh, excellent seminar, excellent uh, talk, and a very on a practical aspect. Uh, uh, my question is simple, of different harvest weeds and control systems that you tried, which one will be most applicable to Indian situation? That is one. And the next one is farmers in India normally intercultivate or adopt some simple machines for intercultivating and to uh, manage inter-row weeds. Is there any possibility to attach any harvest weed set control system to those intercultivating equipment. These two questions, can you please uh, clarify to me? Thank you. Hey, good afternoon, Dr. Rao. Um, yeah. Okay, good to hear from you. And yeah, thank you for the questions. I think um, in terms of the first question, um, I don't know that there is one specific system that will be suitable for all Indian farmers. Um, like in Australia, there's not just one system that is suitable to all Australian farmers. Farmers who have livestock like to make use of um, the chaff material or and potentially the straw material as a feed source. Uh, farmers who don't have livestock 
they're probably more inclined to just uh, want to destroy the chaff material with an impact mill or to concentrate the chaff material into chaff lines. Um, the, the other aspect to it, I guess, is that if I was to recommend to an Indian farmer what to try, I would probably suggest a chaff lining system because it's cheap, it's simple, um, and it's also quite visually um, uh, indicative. So you can visually see uh, quite soon the effect of using that system. So you will see the green strips emerging from the chaff lines and it will tell the growers straight away that they have collected weed seeds and they are in strips just because of the, the visual emergence of those, those weed seedlings. Um, so hopefully that's covered the first question. The, the second question about the inter-row cultivation, um, I guess you're thinking about inter-row targeting of weed seeds. Um, I guess, is that, would that be prior to harvest operation or as part of the harvest operation? No, the crop will be growing around 30 days normally on a central cultivate to manage the weeds in between the rows. And at the time, some weeds are already matured and they're ready to shed their seeds. Can we control those seeds by harvest weed seed control system? Uh, without a crop being ready to harvest? The crop is not in harvest. The crop is around 20 to 30 days after yes. seeding. Okay. Um, yeah, potentially you could. Um, yes, you could run the, the harvester over the, the area and to collect the, the weed seeds. Um, I, I think the, the possibly an issue with that is that you're just collecting the weed seeds and you're not killing the weeds, so the weeds could potentially keep growing. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ross. And uh, now I see that uh, Dr. Chinnamuttu, uh, who is also from... Uh, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University. He wants to know that is there any machines to collect the weed seeds which are fallen on the soil at the time of harvest? I invite Dr. Chinnamuthu rather to interact with Dr. Vals. Dr. Yeah. Chinnamuthu. Uh, yeah, thank you, Sushil. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Walsh, for your informative and uh, useful uh, lecture. We could be able to see many equipments or machines which will harvest the uh, wheat seeds. My question is, many a time, most of the weeds will mature before the crop will come to maturity and the seeds will shed on the soil. So we are unable to harvest along with the grain and separate the wheat seeds from the grain. So it will fall on the soil and it will be ready to germinate in the next season. In many a times, if our farmers in the rice growing areas, they will sweep the field with the broomstick and they will collect as possible, uh, maximum possible, some of the weed seeds along with the grains which are fall on the soil. So this way, manually they are doing, but very small areas. Is there any possibilities of collecting the weed seeds which are fall on the soil, which are present on the surface of the soil? Uh, is there any possibilities like collecting uh, uh, metal bits using magnets? So on the roads nowadays, and nails and other things will create puncturing the tire. The machines are used for collecting the small pieces of iron uh, using the magnetic parts. Such a way, is there any possibilities of collecting weed seeds which are fall on the soil? It's my doubts. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question, Dr. Chinamuthu. Um, yes, there is a machine that you can use to collect weed seeds from the soil surface. It's called a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah, we have, we did try um, a little experiment several years ago um, it, targeting wild oats because wild oats does shed quite prolifically and frequently prior to harvest. It is, it can be done, but again, it's um, it, well, in, in Australian conditions, um, it's not practical because of the big areas that we're trying to treat at harvest time. Um, in smaller areas, maybe there's an opportunity for using suction to collect the, the weed seeds. Obviously there's a lot of other material that needs to, that will finish up being collected as well, that, that needs to be managed. Um, 
but yeah, we need some creative engineering, I think, to uh, develop a system for, for weed seed collection from the soil surface. I think that would be an exciting area of research. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Walsh. Uh, I see that Dr. Pradeep uh, from Ildi uh, had asked uh, that uh, sounds really potentially a good bit. Dr. Uh, Pradeep, uh, you want uh, to interact with Dr. Walsh? Yeah, Dr. Pradeep? Okay. Uh, Dr. Sushil, I'm surrounding. Ah, ah, Dr. Sushil, you, you want to ask? I, I, want, I want to interact with the boys. Yeah, please, please. Can you permit me? Yeah, yeah please. I, I, was, I am surrounding from Pondicherry. I have one small uh, observation and clarification from me. In South India, we will harvest the rice by mechanical harvester. After the harvesting, green campus ever been uh, That after harvesting, it is uh, made into bay, bay, bay system, what we show in the presentation. Whether that type of baler will reduce the weed infestation. After harvesting the rice crop, all the wheat uh, rice stalls made into bale using the baler. We are doing that in our Indian conditions. How can we say whether it is possible to reduce the wheat seed load by doing that daily? Okay. Um, yeah, I think, uh, thank you, Dr. Saravane. I the, uh, the sound quality wasn't. Great, but I think I understand the question um, regarding the use of baling to potentially collect weed seeds after rice crop harvest. Yes. Um, is that correct? Okay. Um, baling, unless the, the weed seeds are maintained up in, a, in the wind row somehow that is collected by the baler, then it's not likely that they will be swept up off the, the soil surface. It typically, when you're baling, you don't want to collect really close to the soil surface because it collects too much soil. Um, so anything that any weed seeds that are close to the soil surface after that rice crop harvest uh, will not be collected for that reason. Um, so that's a, I guess a uh, a soil contamination issue more so than the opportunity to collect the, the weed seeds. But it would be very difficult to collect weed seeds from the soil with a baler. If the, if the weed seeds are maintained within the windrow, um, then potentially, yes. Okay, Dr. Savadan. Uh, so uh, I see that uh, Dr. Subramanam, Dr. Subramanam, you have put on Two questions. Can you interact? Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Subramanian from Tirupur, sir. Hello. You are audible, Dr. Subramanian. Subramanian, are you question? Dr. Subramanian, are you Sir, I want one question. Is suitable for all the separate the all the Hello. Voice uh, is not. Yeah, you are audible. Properly, Dr. Subramanyam. So I put the question of Dr. Subramanyam to Dr. Michael Walsh. He wants to know whether this is suitable for all sizes of wheat seeds. Dr. Walsh, please. Yes, yes sir. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. So we have we have um, tried. Um, a range of, of weed seeds um, from very tiny to quite large. And depending on the harvest weed seed control system, they are all very effective. For example, we've, we've done quite a lot of work um, looking at uh, impact mill effects on, on weed seeds. So uh, we've, we've tested phalaris, annual ryegrass, um, caniza seed, which are, are really quite tiny. Um, 
we've also looked at palmer amaranth, uh, the water hemp species. Um, they're all uh, 95 to 99% control of the, um, of the seeds using the impact mill systems. Um, and then, and then other, other treatments that involve burning then, yes, we found that we can effectively burn um, at temperatures hot enough to, to kill those weed seeds as well. So yes, uh, although we haven't tested all species across all harvest weed seed control systems, it seems that uh, pretty much all systems will be effective on the most common problematic weed species. Also wants to know whether uh, this system is uh, suitable for Indian situations. Can you throw any light? Uh, yeah. Look, I think um, th so. The systems have been in de developed in Australia for wheat production systems, so Mediterranean type cropping, I suppose. Um, so wheat, canola, lupins, uh, chickpeas, etc. So. Um, the systems are, are highly suited to those types of crops for use in those types of crops. So if you are growing those types of crops in India, then definitely they will be suited for use during the harvest of those crops. The crops that we don't um, have much, uh, the crops at, at the moment are proving a little bit difficult are the soybean cropping systems in the US. Um, corn, obviously it's a different harvesting system. So not that effective and then obviously cotton, um, it's not a grain crop, so it not, haven't been developed for that crop. Thank you. Uh, may I invite Dr. Virendra Kumar to ask Dr. Virendra Kumar? Uh, thank you, Dr. Susil. So Michael, uh, sorry that I joined very late. I couldn't attend the lecture, but I know the background of the topic. So my question is general, you know, I think that the technology is targeted to uh, for those weeds which do not shatter before harvest, right? Will remain at mature at almost the same time as the crop is maturing. Uh, so we expect weeds with a lot of diversity that probably weeds will adapt to this situation also. Have you seen any adaptation, whether weeds uh, changing its uh, you know maturity or shattering behavior? Uh, shattering early than uh, normal. Is there any experience you have seen so far? Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Kumar. Um, yeah, so the, the, the weed species that are the obvious targets are the ones who have synchronized maturity with the crops that they're growing in. And annual ryegrass in Australia has adapted um, to our growing seasons the same way that the, the crop breeders have adapted wheat to our growing seasons. So there's been a a synchronization of the, the crops and the weed species in their maturity patterns. Um, there are obviously some species that mature earlier um, that we cannot target with uh, harvest weed seed control systems. And in Australia, one of those species is um, barley grass that tends to mature a little bit earlier. And also wild oats is, is difficult to target. Um, it's We still are able to collect some of the seed produced by those those crops by those weeds but not 70 80 percent it's more like 30 to 50 percent we commonly collect so that means uh, we're not going to have a, a big immediate impact but we'll have some impact over a long period of time and that we can't rely on harvest weed seed control alone to to have a big impact in terms of adaptation to harvest weed seed control Yes, it's possible, um, but we haven't observed it yet. Um, and I think that, uh, I mean, we're concentrating on annual ryegrass with a lot of our research and our observations. We haven't observed it in annual ryegrass uh, at the moment. And I think there's probably a couple of reasons. One is that, um, as I mentioned, we're reducing our ryegrass populations quite dramatically which reduces the potential for resistance evolution. Um, and the other reason is that for other species potentially, we're, we're not 100% effective or we're not close to 100% effective. So the selection pressure for 
resistant individuals or resistant populations is quite is much lower than it was than it is for a herbicide. So herbicide resistance can evolve really quickly because it's a really intense selection pressure. For harvest weed seed control, the selection pressure is not quite as intense. So the evolution for resistance would happen over a much longer period of time if it's allowed to occur. Um, so I guess that's summing up what we've observed so far after 15 to 20 years of use of these systems is we haven't noticed adaptation, but that's not to say it's not happening. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Sushil, may I have a possibility of just having a word with Dr. Bash? Am I audible? I'm Kadresan from Tamil Nadu. Sushil Kumar, unmute Karo. Unmute. Dr. Kathiresan, please ask. Yeah, I'm Dr. Kathiresan from Tamil Nadu. I'm retired from Anamala University recently. I have a, I would like to congratulate Dr. Balz for bringing in a very new and innovative idea of managing weeds. I have just one clarification. I mean, most of the South Indian conditions, the rice is grown under transplanted condition. And more problematic weeds like Achina clover, Kalanum, or uh, Lepta clover, China, even a broadleaf weed like Spinoclea, Xylanica, they put up their uh, ear heads or uh, the seeds are of the same height, almost the same height, or even taller than rice. And they come up in the same duration also. And in such a situation, whether uh, weed harvesting can be, I mean, weed seed harvesting can be taken up. <clears throat> Oh, thank you, Dr. Katharison. Um, if the weed seeds are there at the same height as the, the crop grain, then definitely they can be collected during the harvest operation and then potentially targeted. Um, the thing to keep in mind is that the, the weed, there needs to be a difference in size between the, the weed seeds and the grain. Hopefully there is. Um, if there's not, then quite often you get the weed seeds in, mixed in with the grain in the harvester. But uh, yeah, definitely if the weed seeds are there at harvest near the height of the grain, then they can be targeted. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kathiresan. Uh, thank you, Dr. Walls. Now, uh, may I invite uh, Director DWR, Director of Weed Research, Dr. J.S. Misra, uh, for his uh, final comments before uh, Dr. Sridhar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sujil Kumar. Uh, it was a very nice, uh, in fact, deliberation by Dr. Walls. And uh, in fact, as uh, Dr. Kathiresan said, it was a, a different aspect we are learning uh, since uh, in many lectures, many other aspects, normal aspects of weed management. But it was a new innovative research. And uh, uh, I think the, the newcomers are even the, we are researchers uh, have been benefited by Dr. Wall's lecture. And we know as that the Indian conditions, Indian farming conditions are entirely different uh, from that of Australia because we have a, a small and marginal farms and the <clears throat> diversified farming system. So having big machineries like in Australia, so it may not be uh, feasible for Indian conditions, but it is a really a challenge for our engineers, the engineering colleagues to develop the, 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 the technology, the seed harvesting, weed seed harvesting machines suited to our Indian farmers based on the principles what Dr. Walls has narrated uh, just now in his lecture. And uh, this is the only way, especially uh, as Dr. Walls also suggested that when we talk about the management of herbicide resistant weeds, because that is also increasing in India and more so with the uh, organic agriculture because we don't have any organic or botanicals for the uh, controlling weeds in organic agriculture. So definitely, sir, with this, uh, your vast experience and uh, uh, knowledge and your uh, very beautiful presentation, I must say and I must congratulate uh, you uh, for the benefit of our uh, Indian scientists, particularly uh, the, the young scientists, uh, who can formulate the research programs on these aspects uh, with the available machinery and the engineering scientists uh, who wish and who can 
uh, develop a new type of machinery, uh, taking the principles what you have presented. So thank you very much from my side. Thank you, Dr. Walls. Thank you, Dr. Mishra. I invite uh, for final and concluding remarks of our chairman, Dr. Sridhar. And uh, in fact, Dr. Sridhar is also an engineer, so he might have perceived uh, uh, the things in very right way. And I'm sure that uh, uh, the talk uh, of Dr. Michael Walls has certainly encouraged our uh, scientists from India. Dr. Uh, Sridhar Sir. So, good afternoon to all the participants of this uh, webinar. Really, the talk given by our uh, Dr. Walls uh, is uh, encouraging and highly informative, and it is uh, more useful for our Indian condition. So, from his uh, talk, uh, he observed that uh, this uh, uh, harvest weed seed control systems. Uh, resulted very good impact on weed control on long term basis. From the presentation, we could able to observe the weed density is getting reduced less than one per meter squared. Similarly, the weed seed bank is also reduced to 100 to 200 seeds per meter square. And one more encouraging thing is his practice is accepted in Australia. So as far as Indian conditions is concerned, throughout India, the combined harvesters are invariably accepted by our farmers, especially for harvesting wheat and paddy crop. So invariably, uh, the weed seeds are uh, getting transported or uh, somehow it is migrated from one place to another place. So we have to curtail that. So with that uh, background, so from uh, Dr. Wall's uh, presentation, so in the harvest weed seed control systems, uh, I think uh, the first system which he had explained, uh, chap pot system, so that is a uh, trailing cart attached to the rear of the combine. So which is also possible in our condition. So we are also having paddy combine and wheat combine. So that can be very well easily attached to these uh, uh, combines. So which collects the chaff material and the chaff material only includes the wheat seed and other foreign materials. So that is uh, one thing which is getting a uh, uh, for uh, immediate adoption. The next thing is narrow window banning. So this is also one of the thing uh, which can we can adopt uh, in larger fields. The next uh, system which he had given exposure is uh, on baler. Invariably in wheat and paddy crop, this baler is getting picking up very well. As I said, round baler and square balers are invariably accepted by our farmers and it is being adopted. So only the thing is here, from his stock, we could able to see that these bales are being transported from one place to another place, which may also having result of spreading weed seeds along roads or from one field to another field. So for that also, we have to take some measures. Then another important thing which he had given nice intervention is that integrated impact mills, which proves 90% weed seed destruction. So that is an attachment to the combined body itself. So that also we can try. Either we can do experimentation with weed combines or paddy combines through which we can get results. If it is acceptable by our weed scientist, then there is no problem. Definitely this technology can be easily accepted and it can be recommended for adoption in our Indian condition. Then the recent uh, innovations, what he said is uh, chaff lining and chaff tram lining. So th that things also we can see in condition where we can adapt. Really, it had given uh, a very good exposure for all of us. As an engineer, really it's a good. So this type of uh, novel machines only we have to take care. 
and we have to re-engineer to our Indian condition so that this can be adopted in our major crops like uh, paddy and wheat. Similarly, if we interact with Michael Walls, we can also think of uh, introduction for uh, sugarcane combines also. So that is also very much popular in our India. So altogether, the main purpose is uh, to curve the weeds. So whatever the technology, recent technology is available, that we have to adapt it for our benefit. I think uh, Dr. Walls, uh, uh, Deliverable had given a wide uh, exposure for us to where we have to start the research in refining our machines so that the same machines can also be put into use for harvesting wheat seeds at the time of harvest. Really, I have to thank my personal uh, congratulations for his uh, uh, congratulations to Dr. Michael Walsh for his excellent presentation through which he made the beautiful slides with information and everybody had interacted uh, with his uh, representation. And one more thing is uh, almost all the questions were answered by him with uh, subject to the subject. So it had given a very good uh, lengthy scientific uh, discussion for all the participants of this uh, webinar. And uh, on behalf of uh, uh, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, I hope to extend my heartfelt thanks to the convener and president uh, of Indian Society of Wheat Science who had given me an opportunity to chair the session. Thank you, sir. And similarly, I hope to extend my thanks to our most respected Dr. J.S. Misraji, Secretary, Indian Society of Wheat Science and Director, uh, Director ICR uh, DWR Jabal Four for his uh, uh, excellent interaction and uh, other uh, involvement during this webinar. Thank you for all the participants uh, uh, for uh, their active involvement in this webinar. Thank you, one and all. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Sridhar. Thank, Thank you for your very kind words. Thank you, Dr. Sridhar, uh, for your uh, concluding remarks, uh, as well as uh, uh, your experience uh, uh, about uh, the talk. Uh, and uh, really, it will be a very nice, uh, it was a very nice talk. In fact, when I contacted Dr. Walsh, uh, in his uh, time is uh, uh, very short, in fact, uh, and uh, he has uh, almost, uh, he has taken up, he has still up the time from his uh, very uh, busy schedule. And I'm very much thankful to Dr. Walsh that uh, uh, he has given uh, this lead talk uh, for the idols of uh, Indians. And uh, I'm sure that uh, Indian weed scientists uh, have enriched their knowledge. In fact, to me, uh, it was really a very wonderful talk. I must congratulate uh, Dr. Walsh for, his, for this nice talk. And I have learned a lot that uh, how nicely these sort of machines can be utilized uh, for uh, harvesting the wheat seeds. And of course, in all, particularly now, India is emerging as an organic uh, nation. And uh, a, a few states of India have adopted complete organic farming. So, and uh, it is also uh, the vision of our Prime Minister that uh, uh, we should reduce the chemical load into the environment. In this context, uh, this uh, sort of technology, what uh, Dr. Walsh have uh, uh, taught to us uh, is really very important in Indian conditions. And uh, I'm very much uh, thankful to our chairperson, Dr. Sridhar, uh, who is uh, also one of the uh, best engineers from Tamil Nadu uh, state and he has developed many uh, machines and I'm sure uh, Dr. Sridhar that in uh, coming uh, years uh, uh, you and your uh, uh, group will be working uh, on this wonderful uh, technology and it will be really a very nice thing that if Dr. Walsh come forward uh, uh, to collaborate uh, uh, with Indian scientists uh, to develop some sort of uh, machines. I'm really very much thankful uh, to uh, my past uh, ex-director, Dr. N.T. Yadaraju, who uh, was uh, uh, attending this conference and who also interacted with Dr. Walsh. I'm thankful to Dr. A.N. Rao, Dr. A.S. Rao, Dr. Chinna Muthu, Dr. Tathi Resan, Dr. Vredra Kumar, Dr. Chibramanyam, so many weed scientists and students.
and uh, dr vas for your knowledge uh, uh, i just want to share that uh, today in fact uh, simultaneously one uh, very great program is also being uh, uh, run uh, uh, by uh, inter council of agriculture research uh, that is related to the farmers program but in spite of uh, that program uh, uh, about uh, maximum 180 percent joined uh, uh, the stock i am very much thankful to all of them who joined this talk i am very much thankful to our uh, principal investigators of all india coordinated research program on weed management who uh, were uh, there in this talk because they are the persons uh, who may carry this message forwards and uh, at last uh, i am very much thankful to my director dr j s misra in spite of his busy schedules and simultaneously if, uh, in spite of having a parallel uh, um a program he chose to attend this program and share his comments as well as knowledge so thank you very much again to all of you and thank you very much again dr michael walls namaste jai hind